Hello world, Shelly here, and today I have a marathon episode of Foundation Fest for you. I've tried all of the CoverGirl foundations, so you don't have to. I've all but one, all but one. What I'm gonna do in this video is compile all of the full-length reviews of the CoverGirl foundations that I have reviewed, at least the ones that are still available for sale, and you will have them all in one place to refer back to. I am a big fan of the CoverGirl brand in general, especially since they went cruelty-free a few years back. And we will kick it off with the foundation I am wearing right now and the newest of the reviews. It is the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless. This is the Wrinkle Defying Foundation. I've also got the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless Bottle Foundation. We will talk through the Clean Fresh Skin Milk, which is more like a BB cream kind of a product. One of my favorite foundations, the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made. I have many shades of it, and as a dry skinned person, matte foundations usually don't work for me. This one looks more like a gorgeous satin, and it does not dry me out, so stick around for that one. And I will also show you guys my review of the Outlast Extreme foundation. So I will put them all into rotation here so you can binge watch them all at one time. And I will also link the individual reviews and all of the products down below. So are you ready to see what I think of all of the CoverGirl foundations? This is on, I'm currently 48 years old, but these videos span a few years. So they're all in my 40s. I have normal to dry skin. It is dehydrated and flaky most of the year, and that is what I am coming at you with. I've got some fine lines. I have a lot of sun damage on this side of my face, so if any of that is a struggle that you also share, watch on and see how CoverGirl works for me. Hello world, Jelly here, and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest, and today I'm checking out from CoverGirl the CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ageless Foundation. This is the wrinkle, what do they call it? Wrinkle Defying Foundation. Retails for $15.99 for 12 grams or four ounces of product. This is described as the Olay Simply Ageless Instant Wrinkle Defying Foundation minimizes the look of wrinkles and provides a youthful glow. Skin looks healthier and more hydrated thanks to the number one anti-aging formula with hyaluronic complex and vitamin C. It's SPF 28, that is titanium dioxide, so it is a mineral sunscreen and cruelty-free from CoverGirl. This, I believe, ended up being reformulated once they went cruelty-free in order to accommodate that claim. Uh, I don't see any added fragrance in the ingredients. I could have sworn that I had already reviewed this and I get requests for it a lot and I couldn't find the video anywhere. So maybe I'm just losing my mind. I really thought I remembered the SPF 28, but it must be something else I am thinking of. So I've got this in the lightest shade Ivory 205. It only has eight shades and the shade range is pretty abysmal. This is the lightest shade. I'm guessing it's gonna work for me and I am not the fairest of the fair. So anyone more fair than me probably is out of luck. And I wouldn't even say the shades go to tan. There's nothing in the deep end of the spectrum and barely anything into the medium end of the spectrum. So uh, not the best shade range, but let's take a look at this shade Ivory swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from CoverGirl, the Simply Ageless Wrinkle Defying Foundation in shade 205 Ivory. Second is from Estee Lauder, the Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Third up is MAC Studio Sculpt in NW15. And last is Wet n Wild Tinted Hydrator in Fair. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 48-year-old face. I did prime with the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Primer. This is a very good one. I have it in my top 10 best primers for pore blurring. It also pours texture very nicely. They say to apply this with either fingertips or a sponge, so I will do that. There's no real uh, drippy consistency check because this comes in sort of a balm 
for matte. So I've got a damp sponge here. I think I'm just gonna go straight in and pick product up on here. Oh yeah, that goes easier than I expected. It didn't look like there was much on my sponge, but there clearly was, cause that was some immediate product. <laughs> It's so, you know, the only bummer is that, like, that satisfying swirl is gone the first time you use the product because, you know, you can't keep the swirl forever. I'm just going to take this along and under my eyes as well. Use it as a pseudo concealer. All right, where are we at here? Let's get a look. This is a little bit lighter than I anticipated, which is probably a good thing for the people that are lighter than me. Although this probably is my winter shade. I still have a tiny bit of color left from summertime, but all right. I would say this is like a light medium coverage straight away, even with the sponge, just comparing one side to the other and the amount of redness correction I'm getting from one side to the other on my chin, that actually applied quite easily. Let's go in with fingertips. It's really just like a, a balm consistency. I feel like it's probably easier to apply with a sponge because of the fact that just picking up a quantity of product is a little harder on the fingertips, but you do get the benefit of sort of that warmth of your fingers helping to melt everything together when you apply with fingertips as opposed to with the sponge. But in terms of coverage, I think they actually look quite similar either way. Got the under eyes here. All right, all right. Let me get a let me get a look up in my 10x here. This has some nice coverage. I'm gonna make sure I got my the redness around my nostrils. But straight away, I would say very good coverage. If you are looking for some redness correction, if you've got some discoloration or redness that you want to cover, like I can barely see my sunspots poking through. So most of that got covered, most of that sun damage on that side of my face. It does kind of sit on top of the skin just a little bit and we'll see if that melts down and sort of sinks in a little bit better once the product has kind of warmed up. I do feel like there's a little bit of polka dot pores going on on my nose and a little bit of same kind of thing, polka dot pores a little bit on my chin, but Sometimes that's just the thickness of the product needing to sort of melt together and come together more seamlessly. So I'm going to withhold judgment. Oh, does this top? Oh. oh, look, it even comes with a little foamy thing. I didn't see that on there. I'm like, wait, does this top open up? I would not use that foamy thing, but that does make it handy for travel. But let's see, what is the time? It is 3.50. I know we're getting a late start, so the wear test will only be like uh, eight hours, eight if we're lucky, but let's go ahead. I am going to go put the rest of my face on. I will be right back. Back with the Wrinkle Defying Foundation. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, I don't fully get what the Wrinkle Defying is supposed to be doing and let me elaborate. I have a few areas of fine lines on my face that are more prominent than others. My three forehead lines, my smile lines, and my Meredith Grey wrinkle here, which that along with my little two little wrinkle lines on the left side of my lip, it's a combination of I have drank through straws pretty much exclusively my entire life, and I do this a lot. So does Meredith Grey, <laughs> which is why I call that my Meredith Grey wrinkle, because that is where that comes from. Mm. 
See, there it is. It's right there. It's right there. And those lines on my face don't appear minimized. In fact, I think they might be a little more obvious. And I do feel like, well, I've had to tap out product a couple of times from my forehead lines and my smile lines and my deeper chin line. It's my fat line in this case, but it's a line and you don't want product gathering into it. So the, the wrinkle defying, is it supposed to make them look less obvious? It's not doing that. Is it supposed to defy the gravity of the wrinkle and not collect product in them? It is settling a little bit into those lines. So I'm not, I don't know about that claim. I don't know what it's supposed to be doing. I don't think it's doing anything. It's not doing favors for my lines and my lines aren't significant and maybe I'm too young for who they're targeting with this product. I don't know. Maybe they want to be wearing it on deeper lines than I've got. I'm not sure, but uh, that part of this is not thrilling me right now. But everything went on fine as far as the rest of my face goes. I've got my usual, my broken flower heat wave bronzer and my flower beauty uh, petal Whoa, Sweet Pea is the, the shade. Flower Pots, Sweet Pea is the shade of the blush. Uh, my eyes are the Alter Ego Harmony palette, which is a lovely dupe for the Natasha Denona Retro palette. My lip is the Color Street Darling Lip Liner and the Color Street VIP Lipstick with, look what's back! I decluttered and lost it and I found it again. It's my Petal Pout from Flower Beauty the lip mask that I like to wear as a lip topper or a lip gloss because it is super hydrating and it looks lovely and I'm so glad I found it again. I'm about halfway through this puppy so uh, oh, it's back in my life. Yay! I forgot about it. I haven't used it in a while and it disappeared and uh, you guys have seen the mess that is my vanity. So uh, no surprise that it got lost. It is now found. So I mean, face went on fine, everything is fine, but it's still clinging to certain areas. Uh, here's the other thing I wanted to say about the finish of this foundation. It goes on like a balm, but it, it sets down to sort of a powdery finish to the point that it looks like I set it with powder. I did not set it with powder. I, I, I did, it just looks like there's extra powder in some places. So... Again, over time, we might be able to kind of settle this down, melt it down into the skin. Maybe it will uh, settle down a bit, but it still appears in my pores on my nose and my chin. Not terribly, just a little bit, but it's there. So uh, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to go about the rest of my day. I'm going to have to get a daylight check-in in pretty soon. I'm looking out the window behind you guys because it is, uh, looks like it's going to rain. So I will get you a daylight check-in and then I will come back tonight and give you my final thoughts. Hey guys, we are about an hour and a half in with the Olay Simply Ageless. I would say it's just a smidge too light for me. I would have gone one shade darker, I think. I think at a distance, like a conversational distance, this looks really, really nice. I love the coverage level. I like the finish. I think I wish it was a little more towards satin. It's a little bit matte for me right now, but overall, good coverage, nice look. But up close, it kind of fails me a little bit. It looks a little bit powdery, clings to dry skin just a little bit. I don't think it's doing any favors for my wrinkles and it's supposed to be wrinkle defying. So that's kind of where my concerns lie in terms of what I was expecting based on their descriptions and what we're getting. The birds are yelling at me. I just filled up, I got a new heated bird bath for my buddies out here. I had this one back when I lived in the suburbs of Chicago, but when I moved out here to Virginia, the deck railing wasn't such that I could mount that bird bath on my deck. Well, they redesigned it and I'm very excited because I can mounts it on my deck and the birds are loving it. I love feeding birds. I love my, I love watching birds. The cats love watching birds. So yeah, they're yelling at me because I just came out and cleaned it. So that's where we're at right now. 
and all oh, the leaves are almost gone almost gone oh i can't stand winter but here's your close-up that's where we're at about an hour and a half in right now so i will come back tonight and we'll see how well this one wore 11 15 p.m that puts us right around the seven and a half hour mark or so let's take a look at how the covergirl plus olay simply ageless wrinkle defying foundation held up uh not so great at this point in the day it has settled into most of my lines or broken apart along them. It is kind of moving around and gunking up in places and it still has that powdery sort of finish that's clinging to the edges of dry skin. So it's just not a very long wearing foundation. It did say in the instructions that to have it last longer, you can powder it with any of the CoverGirl powders, but I, I try not to powder my foundation if I don't have to because I have dry skin and uh, it tends to get drier when I wear powder. So uh, it doesn't even really make it through a full work day, unfortunately, on me. Let's zoom in and get a look at it. So on my chin, that's probably, well, I was going to say that's the worst area, but my forehead and nose don't look great either. It's broken apart and kind of gunking up on my chin, and you can kind of see my Meredith Grey wrinkle is broken apart, and the wrinkles on the upper part of my lip, the product is bunching up along them. It's settled into my smile lines. I still have polka dot pores happening on my nose, and as you look to the forehead, it is kind of caking on the texture between my eyebrows. It is caking on my forehead and kind of bunching up and moving around. Settled a tiny bit into my, my forehead lines as well. So it just, you know, not, not great. Not great. If I had to give a grade to the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless Wrinkle Defying Foundation, I'm gonna go C minus and I'm probably being generous. The reason I'm going C minus instead of D below average is because at least initially at a conversational distance, it does look nice. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad. It looks, it's got good coverage. Looks nice. Matte finish, which I, I wish it had just a little bit more luminosity to it, but uh, overall, I, 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 I think it's okay for dry skin. I don't feel like it dried me out or anything, but it doesn't look good on dry skin, so it's not going to contribute to the problem, but it's not going to help you mask the problem either. And as far as all of the wrinkle-defying claims, I do not see that happening. I'm not sure what they mean by wrinkle-defying, but all of my lines, it has accentuated. So I'm going to go C- minus on this one. Uh, maybe a little bit generous. It's that time of year. It's, it's like midterms right now. We just finished midterms a little while ago. So <laughs> C- minus on the Olay. There you have it. Another episode of Foundation Fest is in the books. If you like foundation reviews, if you had fun with this one, I would appreciate a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already and drop in the comments what foundations you would like to see me review next. I keep a running list and I buy them whenever I can. Ziva, please get down. There is also on my website, geekoutofwater.com, a ranked, sortable, searchable spreadsheet of all of the foundation reviews I've ever done on this channel. You can look up all of the final results and see what the best of the best are. Check that out on geekoutofwater.com. As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate your time, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time for your Friday Foundation Fix, where you can get your fix of foundation reviews in between foundation fests. And today we're checking out from the drugstore the CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ageless 3-in-1 Foundation. Retails for $10.49 for one fluid ounce of product, currently getting 4.3 out of 5 stars with nearly a 1,000 reviews on CoverGirl's website. Comes in 12 different shades. I have the lightest shade 205 Ivory. I do want to point out that this is the new packaging 
And this is the formula you want to make sure you're picking up if you are concerned about it being cruelty free. The former packaging and I believe potentially a former different formula had, it was prior to when CoverGirl went cruelty free before they were certified cruelty free. And I know that amongst the community, there were questions about Olay not being cruelty free. And therefore would that mean the Olay plus CoverGirl products were not cruelty free? Well, CoverGirl says these are cruelty free. And I do believe that that is why some of the Olay plus CoverGirl products were discontinued because maybe they couldn't make those cruelty free. There was no way to formulate them that way, but this is cruelty free. And if you're concerned about that, look for this packaging, not the old packaging, because that I am not sure if that one is cruelty free. So that is the deal. CoverGirl did recently within this past year get certified as cruelty free. They're Leaping Bunny certified. This particular foundation is meant to instantly reduce wrinkles, even skin tone, and deliver firming hydration, moisturizes, improves tone. The ingredients include hyaluronic acid and vitamin C, so hyaluronic acid attracts moisture, holds it into the skin, assuming there is a source of moisture for it to pull from. Vitamin C is good for evening out skin tones, reducing hyperpigmentation. Now, of course, there's not going to be enough skincare in this makeup product to be your daily skincare, but I am never complaining about having extra skincare in my makeup. And I also want to point out in the ingredients, the, in the top three, this is a methicone, uh, a silicone based, it's got dimethicone in it. It's a silicone based foundation, but in the top three ingredients, glycerin is one of them. And that's also a humectin. It, it attracts moisture, holds moisture into the skin, acts as a protective barrier to keep the moisture in your skin, in your skin. So if you do good skincare prior to applying makeup like this, you should get a good result in retaining moisture throughout the day, which is really good for dry skin, which I have. So while I was checking out the ingredients also, FYI, it does include added fragrance at the very end of the list. And it does have parabens for preservatives. So if you are avoiding parabens, then you should avoid this one as well. But I am not, so <laughs> I'm going to try it. I also picked up the CoverGirl Simply Ageless Primer, which I have already applied. Let's take a look at this shade 205 Ivory swatched against a few others in my collection. Let's swatch. First up is today's foundation, the CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ageless 3-in-1 Foundation in shade 205 Ivory. Next is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte in shade 101 Classic Ivory. Third up, I've got the Milani Conceal and Perfect in shade 00A. Fourth is the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir in shade 710. And last up, I've got the CYO Life Proof in shade 101. I have already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened my face. I've got some sun damage I like to cover up. I've got deeper smile lines, forehead lines, large pores on the cheeks, some texture between my eyebrows, dry skin, leaning toward normal. We're getting there as the weather improves and gets a little more humid out. I get a little bit better in my dryness of my skin. I have already primed. I used the CoverGirl Simply Ageless all over my face. This is a very nice consistency lotion type of a primer. It's got some skincare in it and I believe it's going to also help with the hydration factor with this foundation. Then I went in with the Revlon Pore Reducing Primer just on my pore areas and my chin, my forehead, and my texture between my brows. So that is just for smoothing and vanity purposes. <laughs> Let's take a look at what we have. We do have a pump with this foundation. I love me a pump. Keeps my grubby paws out of the product, keeps air out of the product, and that way you have less likelihood of oxidation prior to the product reaching you. I'm starting out with a dampened Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. For a thickish kind of formula, this is blending out very easily with the sponge. The added fragrance definitely has a scent to it. I would describe it as somewhat fruity. It's not very strong, but it is noticeable. I can smell it, and I do not have a very sensitive nose. I'd say we're getting some 
evening out of redness with one pass and the sponge, but I can still see all of my sunspots poking through. So I would say pretty light coverage right off the bat with the sponge. Let's try the brush side. This blends out easily with a brush as well. I'd say the coverage is pretty similar to the sponge, maybe slightly fuller coverage with the brush. I think I like the finish with the brush a little bit better. I'd still say we are a pretty light coverage. I can still see some redness coming through on my nose. Even on the brush side, I can see some of my sunspots and some redness around my cheeks. My chin still has some redness coming through. Let's see if we can build this up just a little bit. I definitely like how this builds. It built up nicely. I'd say it's a solid medium coverage right now. The only thing I can see is my one little darkest sunspot poking through a little bit so I'd say we're getting really nice medium coverage and I feel like building it up also helped make it look a bit smoother on the textured side of my face. I still see a teeny tiny bit of redness on my chin. I'm just gonna see if I can get a little bit more coverage there. Let's zoom in and get a look here. My chin still has a little bit of pinkness coming through, which that's just my chin being mean. My, the area around my mouth looks pretty good considering how dry my skin has been in that area. Same with my nose. My nose has been notoriously uncooperative lately and it looks pretty smooth for that. My cheeks look good. I think we're getting a really, really good smoothing of texture. There's some slight blurring of pores. I can still see a little bit of my pore area coming through on my cheeks, but this is not clinging to the texture between my eyebrows. It's not clinging anywhere on my forehead. I feel like overall it is a smoothing appearance. It is a like demi matte kind of a finish. I feel like one thing about these like the foundation's targeted, they're probably targeted to even older than me. You know, they're probably targeted more to the 60-ish age group in terms of the wrinkle coverage. And oh, have you seen some of the models they've been choosing? Some of, some of the older women that they've been choosing as their models for the CoverGirl campaigns. Oh, may I be, may I be so blessed and gorgeous as I age because they have just found some women that are like, I want to be like you. <laughs> so anyway, I digress. I feel like that formula can tend to look a little bit more heavy than some of the more skin-like formulas because they're kind of taking on that role of filling deeper lines and smoothing them over. This, this foundation seems to have a tiny bit of that. It looks a little more heavy than a more skin-like foundation, if you want to use air quotes there, but it doesn't look heavy. It just looks heavier than that. It does not feel heavy. It does still feel a little bit tacky. I'm probably going to have to set this with powder, but overall, I like how we are looking to start out. Let's check the time. It is 1.31. Let's call 1.30 our check-in time. Let me put the rest of my face on and I will be right back. Okay, I had no trouble blending concealer into this foundation. I did end up setting it lightly with powder. I used the Cody Airspun and it seemed to take fine to being set with powder. That did make the finish slightly more matte. In a normal day-to-day -day situation, I would probably then go in with some dewy setting spray just to kind of meld the two together. I did not do that because I try not to go Unless I'm having a disastrous face, I try not to include setting spray in my reviews because I just want to see how it performs with the, the bare minimum of what I would normally do. And it took fine to powder. I don't, I wouldn't go so far as to say I had trouble blending powder products over this, but I feel like the blending doesn't look as nice as it could. And that could just be me having a bad blending day or, you know, 
The foundation stayed a bit tacky, and even since it's been set with powder, it's not tacky enough that, like, hair's gonna stick to my face or anything like that. It's not that level of tacky, but it's not completely set down, and it's, I've done my whole face. It's been a good half hour, so that it could be an issue. I don't know. I'll have to go back, and when I edit this, I will look and say, does it look oddly blended? Does blending look odd? I don't know. I felt like it just wasn't what I wanted it to be quite exactly. We'll see. So, so far so good. I would say everything's all right at this point. It does look a little bit heavy. It doesn't feel heavy. It just looks a little heavy. Look, It looks like makeup. It looks like I've got makeup on my skin, which I do. So... <laughs> That's not a complete, you know, that's not a downfall necessarily for me. Because if the makeup looks good, <laughs> then I'm okay with it. On the rest of my face, my eyes are the ColourPop Misunderstood Disney Villains eyeshadow palette. This is super cute. If you like, you know, the little out there pops of color like I do. I have my concealer. I'm also filming the review of this. It's the Jeffree Star Magic Star Concealer. On my face is the Benefit Cheek Leaders Palette. I used the Hula Bronzer and the Dan Hula Bronzer, Hula, Hula Bronzer, uh-oh, <laughs> the Dandelion Blush and the Twinkle Highlight. This highlight is really unlike anything else I've got. It's this gold pink monstrosity of beautifulness. And my lip is the Wet n Wild Lip Liner Gel Liner in Bare to Comment, topped with a little bit of the CoverGirl Melting Pout Glitz Lipstick. This is in shade 400 Golden Girl and Mascara's CoverGirl Exhibitionist. Liquid Liner is the CoverGirl Get In Line Active. And I think that's everything on my face. I will always link everything on my face down below in the description box in case you want to check that out. I will be back in a bit with a daylight check-in and then I will come back at the end of the night and I'll give you guys my final thoughts. Beautiful sky tonight at the storage facility getting my drill and doing the daylight check-in for the day. It's almost evening. It's about, oh, I don't know, 7.45 or so. So we're about seven hours into this right now. I'd say color match is pretty good. I was thinking it might be just a smidge too light for me, but now that I see it out in daylight, I think the color is probably just fine. I have not gotten a good look up close yet today. Appears that blush bronze or highlight are still intact. I will say that I feel it's not the most comfortable formula. It just feels, I don't know, a little bit heavy or a little bit makeup-y. I can see I'm getting some drag lines here with my crow's feet, which doesn't usually happen unless my skin is getting dehydrated, so that might be an issue later on this evening, but here we are for color match. Pretty good, I think. All right, I'll be back in a bit to wrap this one up. I'm about to sing Iron Maiden. It's 11.56, 57 people, can we say? Three minutes to midnight. The hand that threatens to... I don't even remember the words. <sighs> Yeah, I was a metalhead as a child. 11.57, that makes us at just about the 10 and a half hour mark. Let's take a look and see how this CoverGirl foundation held up. It is pretty much where a dead average wear foundation would be right about now. Uh, it's breaking up all over the place. I do want to make a correction from my daylight check-in. So I had mentioned that I was starting to see drag lines at that time, and I was thinking that that might mean my skin was getting dehydrated because that's pretty much the only time that I really get my crow's feet showing. It's only there. I think it's the concealer drying out my under eyes. Of course, you can see what I'm wearing if you look in the down bar down below. I have a review of it, which I'm not sure is going to post before or after this, but I don't think the foundation is drying. I think it's the concealer because, you know, I take my concealer right around there and none of the rest of my face feels dry. And even when I smile, it's really not impacting 
this skin as much as it's impacting the sides of my eyes. So I, I'm going to take back the dehydration call. I think this is, it really feels pretty doggone hydrating every place else. So if you have dry skin, I think this is just fine in terms of how it feels throughout the day. It feels a little heavier and it looks a little heavier than your typical lightweight makeup. You know, it's not a light like skin kind of a makeup. It's It's got, it feels like makeup. But aside from that, there are good skincare ingredients in it. I think it does look very nice throughout most of the day, particularly if you have deeper lines. Let's just zoom in and take a look. So at this point in the evening, I am losing coverage on my chin and around my nose. It's having a, a minor tendency to sort of clump up the way, you know, the, the sort of bunching that foundations do when they start to break apart and break down. But blush, bronze, or highlight are still fully intact. You know, I think... I think they are perfectly intact as they were this morning. It's really not clinging to any texture between my eyebrows or anything like that. For the most part, it has degraded gracefully. I would say along motion lines, like around my mouth, is where it's a little bit bunched up more so than gracefully. So it's not the most graceful, but it's not the worst in terms of it breaking down. I think it probably had a good eight hours and then after that it started to go downhill. So wear time I would say is pretty much average. To me an average wear foundation is you know eight to ten hours. A good wear is 10 to 12 and a really good long wear is 12 plus. So I'd say we're at about average wear were good hydration. I think it does not settle, it hasn't settled really at all into my smile lines, my forehead lines, a little tiny bit into my deepest chin line, but that's pretty much to be expected. And so there, we're, we're dealing with a mixed bag. And so I'm going to say, if I had to give a grade to the CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ageless, I'm going to go C+. Plus. I think it's a little better than average. If I was feeling particularly generous today, I probably would bump it to a B minus as it's it's right on that fence. I'd call it a very high C plus because I think it, it wears well. I think it's not the most comfortable thing, but I also feel like I'm not yet at the point. Like I can still get away with some foundations that were meant for younger skin. I'm not yet at the point where I need foundations that can cover deeper wrinkles. And I have a feeling that that's what this is geared toward. Therefore, I think if you have deeper lines than I've got, this might actually, like if I was in that situation, I feel like this would be perfectly acceptable to give me the smoothing of lines that I was looking for. So I think it's going to be Definitely worth trying out. Make sure you get the new packaging, not the old packaging, if you are looking for this specific skincare formula and the cruelty-free factor. But it's I think the a C plus on me could be a higher grade. I'm thinking on somebody with more trouble spots than I have, which actually says a good amount positive about the. I'm gonna go B minus because I have I just. I'm going B minus. I t I'm talking myself into it. <laughs> you saw it happen right here. We're going to go B minus. We're going to go B minus because I think there's enough good here to address a larger audience. And, whoa. and since this is all about dry skin and maturing skin, it's addressing dry skin just fine. And I, I suspect it addresses more mature skin than mine even better than it addresses my skin. So there you have it. B minus for the cover girl. <laughs> this is my life. This is how I, this is just, this is my whole life. My whole career is like this. This is what I do every single day. So <laughs> that is your Friday foundation fix in the books. Let me know what foundations that you would like to see in the comments down below. Check my spreadsheet if you want to see if I've already taken a look at something. Geekoutofwater.com. Click the Foundation Fest link. I've got a ranked, sortable, searchable spreadsheet. Over 100 different foundation reviews on there. Scroll that thing to the side. There's a ton of data in that spreadsheet for you to search and to check out. 
And as always, I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. And I hope you all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time to rise and grind. We got a bunch of drugstore new releases to get through. Bonus foundation review today. I'm going to check out from CoverGirl the Clean Fresh Skin Milk Makeup. This retails for $11.99 for one fluid ounce of product. I've got the lightest two shades here, Porcelain and Fair. There are 14 shades available all together. This is currently getting 4.3 out of 5 stars with 30 reviews on Ulta's website. The product details show off fresh healthy skin with your CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk Foundation. Formulated with no parabens, sulfates, phthalates. They also mention on the CoverGirl website there are no formaldehyde and no talc. This lightweight nourishing liquid foundation gives your skin the moisture boost it craves with a delicate infusion of milky coconut and soothing aloe. You'll experience a glowing dewy finish that lasts all day long, blurring imperfections and creating a more even skin tone. They also mention on the CoverGirl website that this is for all skin types. They do recommend that you use the CoverGirl True Blend Face Primer for an even more flawless finish. CoverGirl is cruelty free. I am always excited when they come out with new stuff ever since they went cruelty free because they have just been knocking my world out of the park. That doesn't even make sense. I'm just combining a whole bunch of different... <laughs> so many words. Okay. I'm looking at the list of ingredients here. Uh, this looks pretty much like... Ooh, there's a lot of hydrating stuff. Glycerin's way at the top. Third ingredient. It does have denatured alcohol down the list. But again, it is... Alcohol is not necessarily an avoid-at-all-cots kind of ingredient. It is... Definitely, when formulated properly, totally fine, unless you are sensitive to it. I am not. Then we've got a bunch of silicone, so it does look like a silicone-based foundation. It does not look like it is oil-free, and I do see some natural extracts and things, which for some people are sensitizing. I generally do not have sensitivity to those kinds of things, so let's take a look at these two shades swatched against a few others in my collection. Every day is a good day to swatch. First up is today's foundation, the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk Foundation. The first swatch is the lightest shade Porcelain, and the second swatch is the second lightest shade Fair. Third swatch is the Wet n Wild Dewy Photo Focus in shade Shell Ivory. Fourth swatch is the Milani Conceal and Perfect in shade 00A. And the last up I've got from CoverGirl, the True Blend Matte Made in shade L20. I already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 45-year-old face. I will go in on one side with a sponge. This is a dampened Eco Tools Total Perfecting Blender in the holiday color. And the other side, I've got my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. We will see if one side has a preference one way or the other. This is a super quick blend with a sponge. I feel like this would be a really nice sort of get up and go kind of a foundation in terms of how easily it is applying. We're getting some pretty decent coverage of redness, but I can still see, you know, sunspots poking through. So definitely light coverage, but definitely blending out quickly and easily. This smells like cookies which is torture because I am starving. Let's try the brush side. I think this blends out equally easily and looks equally nice brush or sponge, so I would go with whichever you prefer. I don't think the coverage is really too much different one side to the other. It looks just about the same. I'm going to take just a little bit more product and try to build up just a little bit on my sunspots where I like to have a little bit more coverage, and we'll see if this is buildable. A little redness around my nose as well. This is looking quite nice. I don't think there's a ton of room for building up coverage, but it did build just a tiny bit where I needed a little bit more, so that is nice. If we look up close, I think it clings just the tiniest, tiniest bit to dry skin, 
and that you really can only tell when you look at it up close but on those areas it does look a little bit like it's just sitting on top of the skin and clinging to any any place where you've got skin that needs to kind of exfoliate away that's starting to get loose like slightly almost flaky kind of a thing but overall I do think it is balancing out redness very nicely evening out skin tone I think it's doing a very nice job of smoothing pores I can barely see my pores and texture is not being accentuated I'd say it's even possibly slightly smoothed so Overall, really, that's a pretty good accomplishment for a light coverage foundation. It is light coverage, so that's how they describe it, and I would say that's what you're getting. Uh, it seems to be holding up to the claims so far. Let's check the time. Where's my phone? It's in my pocket. The time is 11.21. Let me put the rest of my face on. I'll be right back. Okay, let's talk through what happened to my face. I did set just the sort of cheek area and forehead area with the CoverGirl True Blend Minerals Powder because here's what's kind of going on. The When you're going for a natural skin kind of look, you usually don't want to be able to see makeup on your face, like sitting on top of your skin. And as this has dried down, anywhere where I've got a little bit of dry skin, it's kind of accentuating the flakes which aren't flakes yet but it's the skin that's ready to exfoliate and up close you can just see it on the skin everywhere and you know I don't think it's really coming across at a conversational distance I'm looking at the monitor here and I think you probably can't tell from a distance but up close you can really see it so Sometimes powder can do that magic trick of sort of evening everything out and blurring it all together. Sometimes it exasperates the problem. In this case, I think it helped, which is good. Now, I didn't apply the powder until after I had applied. I'm trying out a couple of the new items from this line. The CoverGirl Clean Fresh Cream Blush, and that is the blush that I am wearing today. I like it. It looks pretty intense coming out of the tube but it does blend out quite nicely. It has a little bit of a sheen to it, so if you are preferring a matte blush, this is probably not gonna be your jam, but it blends out quite nicely into a nice cool toned pink in this case. The shade I've got is 330 Sweet Innocence. So that is the blush I'm wearing today. Now my hand looks pink. And I also tried the CoverGirl Clean Fresh, this is, let's read the side in English, Cooling Glow Stick. It's kind of a balm. Now, I did accidentally make a divot in the top of mine, so ignore that, but I'm going to put it right here. So it is cooling. It feels cold as heck. But on the skin, I felt like as I was trying, I was trying to use it as highlight, and it, because it's a balm type of a formula, I felt like I was moving the foundation around underneath the balm, and it didn't really add a shimmer. I feel like this product, I've got the shade transparent, I feel like this is more of, if you're not wearing any foundation, to just give yourself some life and some glow into those areas of your face that you want some, not necessarily highlight, but some accentuation like the cheekbones, etc. So I... I'm a little confused on this one. It didn't really work out here. I ended up using regular highlight. So after I applied those is when I smoothed everything out with a little bit of powder. I am wearing the Makeup Revolution Ultra Bronze. Just a little bit of that. My highlight is the CoverGirl Super Stunner in something about Pearl. What is the name of this? Pearl Crush is the shade on this one. And my eyes are the CoverGirl Revolution palette. I believe these are exclusive to Walmart. And my lip is one of the new shades of the Exhibitionist CoverGirl Lip Gloss. It is in the shade Cheeky. And, oh, I'm also still thoroughly enjoying the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Uncensored Mascara. I did not wear the Exhibitionist Lash Primer today just to see how the mascara works on its own. And I like it on its own. The primer definitely adds some oomph and some drama to it. So that might be... Primer's usually a step that I, I skip and I'm not really super into, but I'm enjoying this primer quite a bit. Also wearing the CoverGirl Exhibitionist. This is their new 24-hour coal 
eyeliner pencil. So lots of CoverGirl products going on on this face. I did not wear the 24 hour matte uh, new lipsticks that came out, but they have some more lipsticks. There's a bunch of new CoverGirl stuff out there in the world. So go check you some out. Might as well mention the concealers also. CoverGirl True Blend Undercover. So that is what I am wearing. I'll be back in a bit with a daylight check-in. I'll come back tonight and give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, we are about four hours in and I just got a good look in the mirror at this one and I'm happy to report that the clinging to texture has really melted back together. So I really don't see much of that flaking that I saw initially when I first applied this. It can't be too bad at a conversational distance because I was just at CVS and the cashier asked me if I had just gotten my makeup done because it looked so pretty. And I said, why, thank you, I did it myself. So at a conversational distance, it must look all right. I think the color match is okay for me right now at this winter time of year anyhow. And we'll see if I can get you guys up close. That's it about four hours. I really do like the finish of this. I think it is just right in that luminous but not shiny kind of a look. And I'm gonna step to the side because I can get somewhat direct, like filtered direct sunlight. So let's see. It's through the leaves, so you're getting some shadows of leaves on my face, but, and the shadow of my phone. But at least you can kind of see how the texture and things play out in a more direct light. There you have it. I will be back tonight with my final thoughts. 11.13 p.m. That puts us just approaching the 12-hour mark. Let's take a look at how the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk held up. I will say that describing itself as a nourishing foundation feels accurate. My skin feels nice. It is The foundation has kept up with the dehydration of my skin throughout the day. I'm totally thirsty. I've been working all day and I've not drank enough fluids, so I have been exasperating my dehydration, but my face is not showing it, so that is a good thing. At this 12-hour mark, there's not a whole lot of product left on my face. It is just about kaput. It wants to be done. Let's zoom in and take a look. I've lost coverage in the usual places. My chin has very little coverage remaining. My nose has lost coverage. My nostrils are down to bare skin at points. Blush bronzer highlight did stay fairly well intact, but generally speaking, I do feel like a lot of coverage is gone. I can kind of see a little bit of bare skin on my forehead. That being said, it does seem like it has degraded pretty gracefully. I don't see any major blotches of product gooping up or anything like that. It's not really settling into lines. It settled a little bit into my deepest chin line, but not really any place else. I'm also not having any trouble with it separating along smile lines, for example, so it's not accentuating any kind of lines in that way, which all sounds really good, but... And, and it did get better throughout the day in terms of sort of everything melting together. But all I thought throughout the day was that I don't think that these clean, fresh, quick, glowy kinds of products are really meant for this age group that has things like fine, line, fine lines and sun damage. I think... It's more geared toward people that at most have maybe some unbalanced coloration and need to balance out skin tone, maybe need a little bit of smoothing, whether that means blurring pores or blurring a little bit of skin texture. And that's kind of where it tops out. So I feel like you're not going to get a ton of corrective properties in a product like this if you've got several things going on that need correction, if that makes any sense. That said, for a product in this sort of ballpark, I think it does perform well if you have dry skin. I don't see any issues with it exasperating dry skin. If you have maturing skin, I think you need to take it with 
you know, that caveat in mind. It's not going to do miraculous cover-ups of texture and wrinkles and fine lines. It's not going to make them look worse than they are, but it's, it's not going to work any miracles either. So I feel like you kind of have to walk that balance. And if that's what you're expecting out of it, you may be very happy with this. I think generally it's a good product. If I had to give a grade to the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Skin Milk for dry and maturing skin, I'm looking around around a B minus. I think the clinging to flaky skin really bothered me through a good part of the day. I don't think it was as noticeable to other people as it was to me and my 10x mirror right here, but I do have foundations that handle that that symptom more gracefully. Keep in mind, I do think you can have great success with this if you have fewer issues to deal with. I can see myself reaching for this. I think it's very comfortable. I think if I'm not having flaking skin, I would be in a much better boat to wear this. The reason I'm, I don't want to say I'm glad that I have flaking skin when I'm testing these things out, but I kind of am because more days than not, I am dealing with some kind of challenge with my skin. It is the rare, rare day when nothing is misbehaving on my face. So I like to test these things in real conditions, and I think most people deal with some kinds of issues on a daily basis. So I think it's all right. I think it's above average. I think it could do better for certain issues, particularly flakiness on the skin. That was the one stumbling point that I had with this one, but it's all right. I like it. I will wear it. I think you could like it too. <laughs> there you have it. Another Friday foundation fix is in the books. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. If you have not seen my massive spreadsheet, I think I just crossed 180 foundation reviews. How is that even possible? I don't know. Go to geekoutofwater.com, click the Foundation Fest link. I have a ranked, sortable, searchable spreadsheet of all of my foundation reviews. Although someone in the comments just found one that wasn't on my spreadsheet. I never put the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation in there. Well, I reviewed it. It's in my video. Someday I will double check and get it into the spreadsheet. Let me know what you guys would like to see next. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Hello world, Shelly here and it is Foundation Fest day two out of five where we do five days in a row of foundation reviews and today I'm going to check out a somewhat new launch from CoverGirl, the True Blend Matte Made Foundation and if you didn't hear the news, CoverGirl is now officially cruelty free. They do not sell in mainland China. They are cruelty free in the US. They did a big promo all about it. So congratulations CoverGirl. That is pretty awesome to have another drugstore brand with such an extensive line of products available. You know, I they've done a lot to rebrand with their packaging and their products have been impressing me since this sort of overhaul that they've been going through. So I, I'm interested to look at this. Now this is a matte foundation. I've got normal to dry skin. I'm edging toward dry as winter's coming, but we'll see if it works. I'm looking at Ulta's website right now. This retails for $11.49 US and it's currently getting almost four out of five stars with 16 reviews. It's a pretty new release still. So this comes in 40 different shades. 40 shades. Thank you, CoverGirl. I've got it in two shades here. I got L20, which is described as light ivory, and I've got L40, which is described as classic ivory. There's only one shade in between these two, but there's a big dip in lightness to darkness. I forgot to flip my monitor. Now I don't know which way to move my hand. The lightness to darkness here is big time with only one shade in between there. I think the L20 is probably a little too light for me right now and the L40 is a little too dark for me right now. Maybe if I blend them together. Yeah, that's looking like my shade. So with 40 shades, that's a bummer. <laughs> right now I can't find one that'll match. Yeah, that that's pretty good. That's a pretty good match. 
The description of this foundation, it's your favorite CoverGirl foundation line in a matte formula that is not drying or cakey. It's a formula developed with flexi hold technology that creates a strong yet flexible film on skin for durability and comfort while the mattifying powders absorb oil and minimize pores for a soft matte flawless finish up to 12 hours wear. Film on your face sounds gross. You need a new word for that one, CoverGirl. But 40 shades, I'm impressed color me happy. Let's take a look at some swatches and compare this to some other foundations in my collection. Alrighty, let's swatch. First up is today's foundation, the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. The first swatch is in shade L20, and the second swatch is also the CoverGirl in shade L40. Third swatch is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte in 101 Classic Ivory. Fourth is Wet n Wild Photo Focus in Rose Ivory. And fifth up, I've got the Milani Conceal and Perfect in 00A Porcelain. Starting out with a 44-year-old face, I've got some sun damage that I like to cover up, some fine lines, smile lines, forehead lines. When my skin gets dehydrated, I get sort of drag lines and I get my crow's feet coming out. I do have enlarged pores on my cheeks that like to just look like my face is a pincushion. Fairly annoying. I've got texture in between my eyebrows that likes to break apart with foundations, so that's where I'm starting out. My skin's pretty normal right now, but it's dehydrating easily lately because we're getting into less humid, more dry conditions and winter's coming. But I did prime with double moisturization as a hopeful preventative measure. I've got my Ulta moisturizing primer spray and my NYX hydrating primer. So hopefully that will put down a hydrating base. I have already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened. So all my skincare with all the hydration is on there as well. Hopefully we'll be giving this foundation a fair shot to work. I'll go in on one half of my face with a sponge. This is from AOA Studios on Shop Miss A. This is the Paw Paw Animal Rescue Buck 55 sponge. I really like these. Other side, I'll use my e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. We will see if there is a preference one way or the other. I'm gonna take one pump of the L20 and one pump of the L40 and mix these together. Pretty thick consistency here. Pretty nice coverage right out of the gate with a sponge. This blended out quite easily considering how thick it is. And I feel like I'm getting almost a light medium coverage right away. I've got good coverage of redness. I don't feel like I can see too much of my sunspots poking through just a little bit. And definitely blended out easy. I'm, I'm pleased with how that blended out. Let's try the brush side. This blends out far more easily than most matte foundations I have tried. I really like how easily this blends out because it blends out like a cream, but then it sets down like a powder. You can see after it sits for a minute that you get the sort of powder finish as opposed to the cream finish. So I really like the formula in terms of how it applies. Very easy to apply. I think the coverage is about the same brush to sponge. I don't really have a preference one way or the other. The finish looks very similar. I like it both ways. I'm going to say the brush might be a little bit easier. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit of what's left and try to amp up the coverage just a bit like on my sunspots and the spots where I need just a little bit more. I don't want to go for too much because matte foundations do tend to go cakey on me and we're gonna try to avoid that, but just these couple little spots my foundation. Like, what planet am I on right now? I can see on camera it does still look a little bit dewy with my skincare underneath, but I feel like what's happening is it's doing that dry down thing, and areas that have dried completely down, they have turned matte, so give this one a minute to sort of set itself because it turns into this sort of dried down, more of a powder finish than a cream finish. And so it's in the process of doing that right now. So I'm gonna give it a minute. I don't think I'm gonna set my face because the areas that have set down feel pretty well set down like I could blend powder over them. So I don't think I'm gonna set. I will let you guys know. We are gonna call the check-in time 10 o'clock because that will be the easiest thing for me to remember. Let me put the rest of my face on. I'll be right back. Okay, back. This is a makeup look I call I Gots To Go. So I have one bit of advice when it comes to blending on top of this foundation, and that is 
Be pretty quick with your concealer because if you wait until the foundation dries all the way down to that powder finish, it's a little tough to blend concealer, cream concealer over top of it. However, I did get it to blend out just fine. It, it totally ended up fine. I just had to work it a little bit with my sponge to get some of that moisture back and get everything blended at that sort of seam where the two overlap, but everything went fine. I did not set my face and all my powder products blended just fine. I feel like this is a little more glowy than a typical matte, like on my forehead, but we'll see if it completely mattifies and absorbs oils or whatever it's going to do. I really like how it looks so far. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this so far. On the rest of my face, I've got the L'Oreal Glam Bronze, totally the same as the True Match Lumi Bronzer. This is just the limited edition summer version, and my blush is Wet n Wild Pearlescent Pink. What is this? Highlight is the Wet n Wild Blossom Glow because my beloved air is in my bag over there. But look how pretty that is. I forgot how much I like this one. And lip is the Essence Water Kiss Glosses in Aquatic Chic. My eyes are the Sea Color Dope Palette from Sea Color. <laughs> This is the Laura Lee Nudie Patootie Dupe Palette, and that's all I got. Uh, mascara's Total Temptation from Maybelline, and I got to run out the door. I'll be back in a bit with a daylight check-in, and I'll be back at the end of the night to give you my final thoughts. Hey guys, daylight check-in, CBS run. Let's get out of the shadows, shall we? Color match is pretty doggone good with this combo that I've got going on but it's starting to feel dry. I still think it looks really nice, I'm gonna say. I just had lunch and I feel like my lunch was attacking me. I had like lettuce smacking me in the face and like dripping all over my chin and you really can't tell. So the transfer resistance, pretty good so far on this one, but it's starting to feel tight. It's starting to feel dry. On a normal day, I would probably give a little bop this with some dewy setting spray and try to revive my my skin's moisture uh, but I won't do that for review purposes we'll leave it as is and see how we go throughout the day but we're at about five hours now and I think it still looks really nice so I'll be back later tonight with my final thoughts 10 52 p.m we are approaching the 13 hour mark for this foundation that claims to have 12 hour wear so Let's see how it has held up. Now, just as at the daylight check-in, I feel like it's slightly drying. And if you've got dry skin, that may be a little bit of an issue, but I don't think it's super drying. I don't think my dryness is any worse than it was at the five hour point. So I think all of the dryness that was going to happen happened, so I would call it slightly drying, not deal breaker drying. It's not, it's comfortable. I'm maybe a little bit itchy, like I a little bit tight want to take my makeup off now, but we are 13 hours into wearing this, so I've been wearing this all day. Plus, the last couple hours I was sitting out at a bonfire fire pit outside freezing cold it's chilly out so i think overall the comfort level is pretty doggone good for a matte foundation on the skin of a person who's tends to be dry to dehydrated quite easily so that i think is an upside one thing you might think is a downside and it depends what you're looking for i don't think this is like super matte i know they claim that it's a matte finish but I have thought all day that it had a little bit of luminosity to it. I mean, I have no highlight on my forehead, for example. And you, you can see some luminosity. Now, personally, I think this is very pretty. I would call this matte natural, you know? So it's a, it's a not dewy, not shiny, but it's a, it's a natural, not quite luminous, but some luminosity comes through. And I personally really like this finish. I don't see this finish a lot. I think it's hard to pull off a matte that has any luminosity. Most mattes look flat on me. And maybe that's just because I have dry skin, whatever. I don't know why, but I do really like this finish. I think my blush bronzer high highlight has stayed completely intact. Like, that highlight's banging, you guys. I think that's good. I think in terms of wear, let's take a close-up look. 
My chin is probably the only place that has a little bit of product disappearance going on, but it's not bad. It doesn't look patchy. I did not have any issues with this settling into any lines. It didn't settle into my smile lines. It didn't settle into my deeper chin lines. My smile lines at this point in the night look maybe a smidge more prominent than normal, but my pores look probably about as blurred as they did to begin with. They're not super blurred, but they're not accentuated either. This held up phenomenally well on my nose. It's starting to wear off a little bit on the tip and the bridge of my nose and a little around my nostrils at this point in the evening, but I had to touch my nose quite a bit. I had quite an itchy nose, and I see I have a bunch of ash on my face, but I think this held up really well on my nose. Blush bronzer highlight is in place. It's not gathering in the texture between my eyebrows. It's not breaking apart. It has worn off just a little bit there, but like even my forehead still looks completely intact. And I had ashes from the fire on my forehead and my friend wiped my forehead several times to get the ashes off of my face. And you can't tell, there's no marks on my face. You cannot tell where the lettuce hit me in the cheek like four times when I was eating this afternoon and I had to wipe with a napkin. You cannot tell that I was dripping down my chin. You just can't tell. And I did not touch this up. I think the transfer resistance is really appealing. I really like how well this held up. I think their claim of a 12-hour wear is totally on point. And... This is sounding pretty good, you guys, and I really, this has been sitting in my bin for a while. I was just putting it off because I don't know why. I haven't even seen any reviews of this, so I don't even know what other people think of it. I try not to watch them before I do my own, and now I'm kind of kicking myself for not trying it sooner. There is one color shade in between 20 and 40, although that looked more yellow undertone, which is why I avoided it, but maybe I'll try it out, but I do think this combo made a very nice color match for me, and... What can I say? I like this stuff. If I had to give a grade to the cover glow, oh, 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 oh. the cover glow, oh, 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 gosh, I need to go to bed, you guys. If I had to give a grade to the cover girl, true blend matte made, I'm going to go A minus, and the minus is only because I think it is slightly drying. So if we're talking mature skin, I think it works fine with fine lines. I had no issues with that. I think it's good with texture. No issues there. For dry skin, it is slightly drying. So I'm going to ding it a little bit for that because, you know, those are my, my two main sort of audiences that I'm, I'm checking these out for. But doggone, it's a pretty matte finish that I had no trouble working with. Really, it, it, I like it. This, this is, this one surprised the heck out of me. So thumbs up, CoverGirl. Also cruelty free. A minus for the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made. Heck yeah. Good day, good day. We needed a little redemption after, after the first day, right? Bravo, CoverGirl. I'm happy with this one. We are going to keep on rolling with Foundation Fest. Five days in a row of Foundation Reviews. Day two is in the books. If you like Foundation Reviews, if you like this one, if you like Foundation Fest, if you want me to do more Foundation Reviews, give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, except during Foundation Fest when I'll post five days in a row. Please leave me suggestions down in the comments for future reviews. What do you want me to check out? More foundations? What makeup products? Let me know. Anything you want to see on this channel, give me ideas down below. I keep a running list, and I try to keep up as best I can. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Check out geekoutofwater.com. Click the Foundation Fest link. I've got a ranked, sortable, searchable spreadsheet of all of my foundation reviews. And as always, you guys rock. I appreciate you. Thanks a lot. I hope you all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest. And today I'm going to check out one from CoverGirl. I've got the True Blend Liquid Makeup, the regular True Blend. I am a huge fan of the Matte Made True Blend, which actually wears more like a satin on me. And I figured why not try the one that is not matte. It doesn't come in quite as many shades. The Matte Made comes in 40 shades. This one comes in 21 shades, 7 light, 7 medium, 7 deep. 
and they claim that with this particular shade range, you can get coverage with appropriate matches for 99% of all skin tones. They don't make a whole lot of claims about this one. It retails for $11.49 on, let's see, I'm on CVS's website and for one fluid ounce of product. They say it provides a flawless natural look that blends with your natural skin color and naturally disappears. Feels lightweight, matches 99% of all skin tones, and you won't know where your makeup ends and your natural skin begins. And that's really all they say. They don't really have skincare claims. There's no SPF in it. So that is kind of where it starts out. Let's take a look. I've got L1 and L2, the lightest two shades. Let's swatch these against a few others in my collection. Alrighty, let's swatch. First up is today's foundation, the CoverGirl True Blend Liquid Foundation. The first swatch is in the lightest shade L1, and the second swatch is in shade L2. Third swatch is also CoverGirl. This is the True Blend Matte Made in shade L20. Fourth, I've got the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy in Shell Ivory. And last up from NYX, I've got the Born to Glow in shade Light Ivory. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 45-year-old face. I like to cover up my sun damage. I like to conceal the texture between my eyebrows. I have some pores. I like to smooth and blur them. I like to get rid of all the texture. Fine lines, hide them, you know. I have primed with the CoverGirl Skin Smoothing version of the True Blend Base Business. I will go in on one side of my face with a sponge. This is from Shop Miss A, the AOA Studios Paw Paw Pet Charity sponges. They're $1.55. I will use my Artiste Oval 7 on the other side. Product, it layered just fine, but I don't think I really got much more coverage on my dark spots. I think they look pretty similar to what they did initially. I do like the finish of this. I think it is a dewy finish, so quite luminous. It does not feel greasy. For as thick as it appeared on the palette, it blends out very, very thin and very sort of sheer and light feeling. I don't feel like it's heavy at all. I feel like it blended out very lightly and nicely. And in that respect, I do think it's a your skin but better kind of a look. Uh, I wish there was just a little less of the unbetter parts of my skin showing. Uh, right off the bat, I'm not having any trouble with it gathering into lines, smile lines, uh, forehead lines, nothing going on there. Let's take a look at the time. Where is my phone? It is 10.17. I'm going to go put the rest of my face on. I'll be right back. So far, so good with the CoverGirl True Blend. I want to show you one strange thing. The product that was left on my palette. Here's how it dried down. Weird, right? I don't feel like it dried down any strangely on my face, but that's weird looking. Cat fight happening. I did end up setting this with the CoverGirl True Blend Minerals. Turned out to be a fantastic combination. It just set beautifully. Rest of my face, I've got the Makeup Revolution Ultra Blondes, Blondes, wow, Bronze, Went Wild Pearlescent Pink. The highlight is the CoverGirl Super Stunner. On my eyes, I went with the Tati Beauty Palette. For future reference later today, this is not Fallout of the Glitter. Half of my face, I just touched my under eye with the glitter and then tried to clean it up, and now it's all over my face. So that's my bad. <laughs> not Fallout, just user error. And, oh, my lip is a CoverGirl Exhibitionist Gloss. Easy Breezy Brow CoverGirl. Is that all I'm wearing? CoverGirl Lash Primer and Exhibitionist Uncensored Mascara. I think that's it. I'll be back with a daylight check-in in a bit, and I will come back tonight give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, daylight check-in here. It's been about four hours. I got a good look at this up in, well, bathroom lighting. Still looks good. Still looks fresh. Still like the finish. The only thing I'm noticing is it feels just a smidge, tiny, tiny bit drying, possibly color match. I'm probably in between the first and the second shade. I'm wearing the second shade today, but uh, that is where we're at, at the four hour mark. I'm going to take a little walk here because I think I can get some direct sunlight for you guys. Let's see here.
There you go. Full sun. Oh, it's bright. <laughs> I will be back tonight with a final check-in. 10.23 p.m. That puts us right around the 12-hour mark. Let's take a look at how the CoverGirl True Blend held up. It's pretty comfortable to wear. I think it's tiny, 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 slightly itsy-bitsy bit drying. Just a little bit, just a touch. It doesn't seem like it's any more dry than it was this afternoon, but it did sort of dry down a little bit. But one thing that's interesting, and it might have something to do with the strange, I still have it here. Here's what it looks like now, 12 hours later. It might have something to do with this, how it sort of separated and, and dried down, but it has a really nice smoothing effect on the skin. Even now, as I feel like it is sort of, you know, vanishing, evaporating away. It's just a nice, it's a nice smoothing effect. I, I've generally enjoyed wearing this. If, well, let's just take a look. Let's take a look up close. So most coverage is gone from my chin, gone from around my nose. But the thing is, it really isn't gunking up or looking cakey. It's just disappearing. So there's not really any drastic separation on lines because the product is just kind of vanishing. It's not it's not caking up, it's not gunking up, and I'll I'll call that a win in the sense that I would rather it be a nice graceful d a sort of disappearance than anything else. You know, I'm starting to see my crow's feet a little bit. My skin just looks a little bit dehydrated, but it's really not causing trouble anywhere. It's degrading gracefully, and I like that in a foundation, especially at the 12-hour mark. So, you know, I wouldn't feel weird if I was seen out in public like this. I would, I would feel okay with this. So, I guess if I had to give a grade to the CoverGirl True Blend, don't forget they are cruelty-free, Leaping Bunny certified now. Polly's trying to get out of the room. I close the door when I film, and they're either in or they're out. Polly's in, and she wants out. <laughs> I'm, I'm hurrying as fast as I can, Polly. If I had to give a grade to the CoverGirl True Blends, I'm going to go solid B on this one. I like the matte made version better, which is weird, because matte usually would imply dry skin would not like it. But the matte made wears like a satin finish on me. It's very pretty, and I don't find it to be quite as drying as this, which is odd because I expected this to be less drying. But this is good. I'll wear it. I will definitely keep these in rotation. It's wearable for me. I think it looks pretty nice. I think CoverGirl's done a great job since they went cruelty-free and did this whole rebranding thing, and I've just been very, very happy with this brand. So, there you have it. We're going solid B on the, I don't know, is this like the original True Blend, or I thought Matte Made came out first. I don't really know which one came out first, but there you have it. Another Foundation Fest episode in the books. If you enjoy foundation reviews, if you would like to see more of them, give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate it, and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye. Hello world, Shelly here, and it's time for another episode of Foundation Fest. And today I'm going to check out from CoverGirl the Outlast Extreme Wear 3-in-1 Foundation. I have two different shades of this, the two lightest shades, I believe, 810 Classic Ivory and 820 Creamy Neutral. This retails for $10.49 over at Target, and it comes in 21 different shades. We have SPF 18, it appears to be a chemical sunscreen, octanoxite, and they say, speed up your beauty routine with a long-lasting foundation, primer, and concealer all in one. Whether you dab on a little or a lot, CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear 3-in-1 Full Coverage Liquid Foundation is sure to be your go-to when it comes to providing naturally flawless full coverage finish you crave. Lightweight, cake-free, 24-hour formula, covers imperfections, yada, 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 defends against the elements, hydrating, breathable... 
sweat proof, transfer proof, humidity proof, apply with fingertips, brush, or sponge, cruelty free. Yeah, sounds lovely. I wish I realized it had a primer built in because I already put some primer on, but that's okay. Let's take a look at these two shades swatched against a few others in my collection. Swatch time. First up is today's foundation from CoverGirl, the Outlast Extreme Wear Foundation. The first swatch is in shade 810 Classic Ivory. Second swatch is also the CoverGirl Extreme Wear in shade 820 Creamy Natural. Third up is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place in 1C1 Cool Bone. Fourth, I've got from Wet n Wild the Photo Focus Dewy in Shell Ivory. And last, I've got from Misha the Perfect Cover BB Cream in shade 21. I've already cleansed, moisturized, and sunscreened this 46-year-old face on one side. I will go in with a damp sponge. The other, I've got an It Cosmetics brush. It's not dirty, it just supposedly has skincare built into the ends of the bristles. Whatevs, I think it's pretty gimmicky and I don't think they make this brush anymore, but we'll see if this goes better one way or the other. This has some really nice coverage right away. I'd say we are at a light medium coverage, just quick pass with the sponge. It is blending out easily, clinging just a little bit to some dry flaky skin I have on my nose and a little tiny bit above my lip, but it is blending out nicely and that was like really quick and easy to get some nice looking coverage. Let's try the brush side. I feel like this blends out faster with the brush and I think I like the finish just a little bit more. It seems to cling a little bit less to my dry skin on the brush side. I am getting a little bit of clinging to the dry skin between my eyebrows, that little bit of texture there, but this blended out really nice and I did not use anywhere near all of the product I pumped out. I'm gonna take my fingertip and just try to get a little more coverage on my little blood vessel over here that likes to be obnoxious. There is a chipmunk that is running back and forth past my window because I just refilled the bird feeders and um, he's super cute and he's so tiny and chipmunks are like, how do they even survive? Like they're so little and they're so cute and I will be so sad the day that my chipmunk doesn't come to say hi. <laughs> but he lives somewhere on that side of my house. I don't know where exactly, but that's where he comes from and goes to and he's adorable. Did you guys watch the chipmunks when you were little? Are they still a thing? Do they even exist? This did a really good job of uh, covering up this little zit that I got going on here that of course I picked because I'm not smart. This looks nice, you guys. This coverage is really nice. It's totally buildable. I can barely see it. I see one little sunspot and I can probably make it go away. I bet I can. All right, all right, all right. Let's zoom in and take a look at this one. This coverage is lovely. I think this is like a natural finish, leaning matte, but it's not flat. There still is a little bit of reflect that you get off the high points of the face. Clings just a tiny bit to the edges of skin that needs to exfoliate away. That's really the case with just about anything. And this finish, is the kind of finish that normally would make the edges of dry skin look worse. And I really don't think it's doing that. I think it's tolerating it very nicely. So if you are a fan of a matte finish, this might be the kind of thing that works well for you if you do have some peeling skin every once in a while. I think this looks nice. It looks really nice on my pores. It's not accentuating texture. Right now, it's not settling into lines. We will see if that remains true. My forehead looks fine. Everything looks pretty doggone good, you guys. I don't think I'm gonna have to set this with powder. I'm gonna give it a couple minutes. It's just the tiniest bit tacky right now, but I have a feeling this is gonna set itself down. 
which that would be even better. I mean, can it get any better? I'm seeing my little things in the monitor and it's making me really happy. <laughs> you know me and my headbands, you guys. But if I zoom out so that you can see it, then you can't see my face and oh well, it makes me sad. All right, let me go put the rest of my face on. Where is my phone? It's 107 p.m. I will be right back. So far, so good with the uh, CoverGirl Outlast Extreme wear. I know people have different ideas of what everyday makeup is, but like this is my everyday makeup. Like this level of coverage, this finish, this, this is what I would look like every day if I had the time to look like this every day. Like this is, this is it, is, is right here. Um. Did not have to set this with powder, which is awesome, and I think all of the powder products blended on top of it just fine. I'm wearing the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer, had absolutely no trouble blending the two together. Everything's going well, and even the flakes that I originally was seeing on my nose, like, they're barely visible. I see some fallout that I missed, but they're really, Everything's looking pretty doggone good. This reminds me of how I feel when I apply the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation, which is one of my favorites. This is more matte than that on me. That does not wear matte on me at all. That wears more like a satin, natural kind of finish. But I feel very similar in, I really enjoy that foundation. I have three different shades of it. And uh, this, this, my initial impression is very, very similar. It's a different finish, but it's, it's the same kind of feeling. I'm hoping that as the day goes on, it does not make me feel dry as tends to happen. I dehydrate very easily in terms of my skin. So hopefully we won't have any trouble. We will find out. On the rest of my face, I've got NYX Sweet Cheeks blush as my contour. I had to dig out the Balm Desert. I know you can't get this anymore. It's my all-time favorite, and thank you, a while back, one of you guys sent me some backups when it was on clearance at Kohl's, and I will never run out of it, and it's my favorite tone of bronzer ever, and nothing has ever actually perfectly matched it, and I love it, and it's my favorite, and I was feeling in the mood for my favorites because this was making me feel like I was in the mood for like my favorite face. And so then my new favorite blush combo with highlight Clarins Jolie Blush in Cheeky Baby and Wet n Wild Blossom Glow is my highlight. My eyes, this is a palette I had put together with singles from Adept. If you're not familiar with them, they make my favorite magnetic palettes of all times. So this is just a bunch of their singles that I put together. Their eyeshadow formula is fantastic. I do have a discount code with them down below. They have a pre-order going on right now for a couple of new palettes that they're coming out with this summer, which I really need to get on that and pre-order it while you still can. But uh, check them out if you're not familiar. Their formula, especially for duochrome eyeshadows, is bravo, Mwah. chef's kiss, like gorgeous. Uh, yeah, mascara is CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean. Uh, my eyes, my brows are uh, hair gel and my lip. I've not worn these in a minute. It's the Outlast All Day from CoverGirl, but they've got this new line of them that they're calling the New Neutrals, and uh, this one is, the one I'm wearing is Dusty Blush. These are the ones that you apply the base coat, give it 60 seconds to dry down, and then throughout the day you top it with the moisturizing balm, which, you know, this is basically any kind of lip balm that you like. You can use as the topper. Oil-based ones will break down the color, but if it's not an oil-based one, you'll be fine. Uh, I love these. I have a bunch of these. And so the new neutrals, so there's this shade, which looked like it was going to be a little bit more cool toned than it actually comes across on me, but it's fine. It's beautiful. I also picked up this shade, which looked like it was going to be too peachy for the look that I'm doing right now. But yeah, these are the, the new neutrals, and they had a whole bunch of colors, and I like this format, and I haven't worn them in a while, so uh, that's what's on my lips. I'm gonna go about my day. Gotta do some nails. I'm naked. I'm naked, you guys. Gotta get... Problem is, it's so hard to decide what I want to do next, 
and I was picking at this hand. I pick my nails, it's terrible. It's, it's a horrible habit. I do it when I'm stressed out. And uh, so this hand is in bad, bad shape. This hand, that's my nail fee hand. <laughs> I haven't picked, it's doing all right. But I hate to waste like a gorgeous, like mixed many artistic idea when one of my hands looks like blah. Don't pick your nails, guys bad. It'll make you very, very sad. It makes me so sad. I did it to myself. This hand looks nice though. So I don't know what I'm going to do. That's my day. I got to run to the post office. Uh, that's about it. I'm going to have a nice, I'm filming this on the weekend and I rarely take weekends off, but I think I'm going to take this weekend off. I'm just going to enjoy the weekend. That's my plan. I'll come back in a bit with a daylight check-in and then I will come back tonight and give you guys my final thoughts. Hey guys, it's been about three and a half hours now and I'm in standing in the shade, but I will step into the sun in a moment. Uh, I was wearing a mask for about maybe 20, 30 minutes. My, I just took sunglasses off so you see the indentations in my, eye, my eyes, my nose, but it doesn't look like there's much product missing. I was standing outside for a while, so I'm a little bit chilly. My my face is a little flushed, but uh, yeah, here we are. There's shade, color match. I think everything still looks like it's holding up just fine. Let me step into some sunlight. Whoa. That's how it looks in the sun. Color match. It's probably easier to tell in the shade. So that is where we are at. Uh, so far, so good, I would say. I'll be back tonight and we'll see how it goes. 12.05 a.m. Let's take a look at how the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear held up. First off, I stopped by CVS today and this is not the lightest shade. There are actually two shades lighter. So they've got 800 and 805, I believe they were. This is 810 and 820 that I've got. So there are lighter shades, which is good because I think that the 820 shade is actually a really good match for me. So the fact that you've got three shades lighter to choose from is good because I am not the fairest of the fair. I'm just like middle range fair. So that was good news, I thought. Uh, let's talk comfort wear. It's really comfortable. You get a ton of coverage for a very lightweight feeling foundation. I like that. I like that a lot. In terms of dry skin, I'm not going to go so far as to say I feel like this is a hydrating formula. But for a matte finish, I feel like my skin is not dry at this point in the evening and we're 11 hours in. That's pretty good considering it's still winter time here. I'm pretending it's spring, but it's not. I, I also never got around to doing my nails because I got crazy busy. So dry skin, I think you're fine. Let's take a zoom in and check this one out up close. So Honestly, at a conversational distance, this, I think, still looks really, really good. I don't think you can see the product breaking down at a conversational distance. If you get up in the 10X, it is a little bit more obvious, but it's really just kind of the fact that at this point in the night, you can see product in some spots on kind of on top of the skin, but it's not really doing and it's not moving around, it's not settling into lines. Even my deepest chin lines don't really have product settled into them. Blush bronzer highlight is still practically brand new looking. My pores still look smooth. There's no issues with texture. My nose is a little bit of a hot mess and I'm gonna say I think the way the wear looks on my nose, I think it is probably due to wearing the mask because that's kind of I have the KN95 masks that have the metal clip in the nose and on the bridge of my nose is where I clip it. So it looks like that's where that has worn off. But forehead still looks good. Like 
honestly, the fact that it's a little bit more dewy than it was when we started, I would have called it matte in the beginning, like a satin matte, and I would say now it's reminds me again a lot of the True Blend Matte Made because it wears a lot more satin-like on me. Like there is some more reflect now than there was earlier. I'm not an oily skinned kind of person in any way, shape or form. I really don't produce oil. So anytime you get any kind of sheen coming off of a foundation, it is usually the ingredients in that product causing that. So it is probably breaking down a little bit. I'm just looking at my forehead. I have no highlight on my forehead. So that is all product happening. I personally like it. I think it looks nice. I think it's a good amount. It's not like sweaty dewy. I'm curious. I'm going to do my little two finger test and like touch my forehead and see if I can see where my fingerprints were. Can you see them? I can't really see them. So I don't think it's really oil. Maybe a tiny bit I can see them. I don't see anything on my fingers. So it doesn't want to focus. I don't really feel anything on my fingers, so I think it's just kind of the way the product ends up over time. You guys, I'm pretty happy with this one. I gotta say. Also, for note, the lip, this is, you know, the, the long wear, what the heck is it? Outlast all day. I should just know, it's the same name as the foundation. Uh, this is what the lip looks like after two full meals, including a somewhat greasy one, a bunch of snacks, and very many Diet Dr. Peppers. This is what you have left at the end of 11 hours, and it holds up pretty good. The center is, of course, missing, but uh, I really like these. I was at CVS today, and I think I bought another one. I bought one that would have gone better with this eye look. I'm like, did I buy one? Yeah, I think I did. I think I did. All right, if I had to give a grade to the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear 3-in-1 Foundation, I don't think it would last 24 hours because we're about halfway through and I'd say it's starting to show signs of wear. However, I really like it. I'm going to give it an A. I really like it. It's a nice finish. It works for dry skin. Anytime I can get in the ballpark of a matte finish, on my dry skin, especially in the winter time. It's probably going to wear even better on me come summertime. Nothing feels dry. It's not uncomfortable. It was easy to apply. It's vegan. It's cruelty free. I don't know if it's vegan. I'd have to double check that. It's definitely cruelty free. It's got a little bit of sunscreen in there. I love me some sunscreen. Always wear full sunscreen underneath your makeup. You are never going to apply enough makeup to give yourself the fully stated SPF that's on the label but I still like having more sunscreen. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, A, yeah, it's an A. I like it, I like it a whole lot. I love CoverGirl, their complexion products really work well for me and I'm just a CoverGirl fan, kind of a fangirl the last couple years. Ever since they went cruelty free, they have just blown me away. What can I say? I can say they get an A. I'm a poet, didn't know it. All right, that's all I got you guys. Yeah, I should go to bed now. <laughs> As always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. Come back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time for new videos. I appreciate your time and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.